If you can open your brain to an abundant, a possibility way of thinking, the, the world will unravel opportunities for you. It'll show up. And then really just um, focusing on the asset, right? The asset will lead you to the next asset, uh, whether that's your personal strengths or whether it's a structure, a business, an opportunity. Um, you can, you know, apply assets to. Welcome to the Bulletproof Cashflow Podcast. Let's get into the show. Hey everyone, this is Agostino. If you've been training and studying the realistic game for some time, you know that you're developing those innate talents and assets to create opportunities for yourself to raise money from your existing network for actually purchasing and controlling real estate. So when you commit to real estate investing, it can be really, really tough to build your legacy if you don't know what you're doing. And part of it is, is developing the understanding and the skill set. Well, today's guest understands this very, very well. Back in 2006, he was brand new to the real estate game. He was young and had no money. He could barely keep up with his mortgage and he was facing foreclosure. But then everything changed in 2009 when he purchased his first investment property. Since then, he has owned many companies. He has built his own real estate firm and is now an experienced broker and investor himself. In addition, he's been named the top 40 under 40 in Alaska and has been featured in places such as ABC, NBC, Digital Journal, and Investor Place. Now, on top of all that, he is the author of the book, Assets, Acquisitions, and Abundance, a guide to building true wealth and legacy through real estate. Now, with all that, I'd like to welcome Joe Bell to the show. Hey, Joe, thanks for coming on, man. Hey, Augustino, thank you so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Now, if you like what Joe has to say, you can reach him via his contact page at legacybeyondlistings.com. And if you like our content, please don't forget to leave a comment and rate the show. It helps us out tremendously when you do. Now, finally, if you text the word freedom to 202-410-4202, you'll get our free ebook, The Bulletproof Guide to Finding a Broker. Okay, Joe, go ahead and tell the listeners a little bit about how you got your start in real estate. Uh, it's actually a uh, pretty interesting story. So back in 2006, which you mentioned, uh, I was actually running a bar. I was in the process of purchasing a liquor license off of an owner and like running a bar in my brain, every dude's dream. Okay. Like I'm going to build this bar. All my friends are going to come down. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have some drinks. I'm going to make some money, you know, the, the, the whole gamut. And, uh, so as I'm going through, uh, working towards purchasing this liquor license, um, the individual I'm, I'm purchasing it off of is actually a commercial real estate broker. And he's like, Hey, you know, I, I really want to sell you this liquor license, but first I also want you to get your real estate license so we can work together on both sides. And I was like, oh, wow, that that's like a perfect lineup for what I'm looking for. Um, and at this point, I had been very intrigued by multifamily and, you know, real estate as a whole. So it just aligned. So uh, fast forward about nine months down the road um, and the bar is just a complete wreck. Like it uh, <laughs> it's not making money. My friends aren't showing up, which was a huge ego blast personally. Um, that was something I had to work through and I'll probably have to talk to a therapist sometime down the line. Uh, but, uh, it's just failing and it's failing miserably. And, um, and I go back to Kurt and I'm like, Kurt, man, like you can take this liquor license, you can take this bar back, but I want the real estate side of it. So he's like, all right, you know, come into my office and we'll chit chat about how to get you, you know, running down this, uh, this real estate line. So I show up and he's like, all right, this is real easy. Here's a pen. Here's some paper. And next thing you need to do is go dial your ass off and make contacts. It baffled my mind. I'm going, oh, hold on. There's like, you know, what about learning how to do leases and what about learning how to write offers? And he's like, none of that matters, to be honest until you have contacts. Yeah. So that was a, um, that was a good introduction to real estate right there. Uh, and it took me a while, like you mentioned, uh, I started in 06, um, but it wasn't until 09, um, you know, that was when the real breakthrough came. So uh, 06, 07, 08, I mean, just a complete uh, cluster in the real estate game, uh, which was really good for me. I learned how to do real estate in a down market, you know, cause it was like, I got my license and then all of a sudden the market was like, ee, you know, 
And uh, so it wasn't easy and I wasn't surviving very well. I had a girlfriend at the time that, um, you know, there were multiple conversations where I had to go to her and be like, well, I'm not really going to be able to, you know, make our payment this month. So are you able to help? And uh, lucky, lucky enough, she was in a very stable position. She had a great job. Um, she's from the mindset of, you go to school, you get your degree, you jump into corporate at the bo bottom, you know, basement level, and then build your way up, right? Which just wasn't my thought, right? It wasn't my mindset. I was going to go entrepreneurial 100% and figure it out. Well, for uh, many a monthly payments, that sh it just wasn't working, you know? And she's sitting there going, Joe, like, you're a smart guy. You've got your finance degree. Just go get a job. Like, do this for me, get a real job, monthly payments coming in, um, monthly income, I should say. Fast forward today, uh, that girl and I just celebrated our 10 year wedding anniversary. So uh, I knew she was a keeper, even though, she, well, it was probably because she challenged my mindset that we ended up working out so well, but that's a whole different story. So so anyway, I'm, I'm grinding in 06, 07, 08. I'm learning some you know, of the real estate side of things. I'm staying up till like 2 a.m., uh, just purely going through profit and loss statements for big multifamilies. Um, not so much the commercial commercial side of the world, but big multifamilies. I was just intrigued so much by big multifamilies and had a couple of deals that came in. Um, but it wasn't until 09 when I found myself, I, wa I want to say, I think, I think the story sounds better if I say Christmas Eve. It was really close to Christmas. And there was an investor that I'd been trying to get in touch with to um, just work with me. And he was shutting me down, left and right. Um, this happened to be my girlfriend's boss at the time. And, uh, and finally, like I said, I think this is somewhere right around Christmas Eve. I get a call and it's about nine o'clock at night in December. And like we were talking, like it's, it's cold, like way cold outside. And he's like, hey, Joe. Here's your shot. Meet me over at 7530 Barefoot. Uh, I've got a property I want to take a look at. And I'm going, nine o'clock at night. All right. It's freezing cold. What could what, what could be going on at this fourplex uh, this time of night? So we roll over and uh, he's like, he's like, I came by here earlier. Let's jump into the crawl space. And he goes jumping in. He, and he has these, he has um kind of like galoshes, some um uh, uh, kind of up to his knee boots on. And I, I was totally unprepared for that, but he goes jumping in and legitimately the crawl space is filled with probably about 10 to 12 inches of what I thought was just water, but it happened to be sewer. Oh, no. Um, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was, it was a mess. Right. Uh, but I remember at that moment kind of taking a, taking a step back and looking around and, you know, I'm basically almost standing in, in shit water and just kind of going, yep, this is where I'm supposed to be, you know. And <laughs> like, <laughs> honestly, I, it, it was one of those moments where I was like, God, I love what I'm doing right now. You know, it's so far off of the normal conventional path. Um, and there was a great opportunity. I got in with this investor. And what's cool is, when you play that story out uh, from 2009 to 2020, that same individual, uh, they are now my, my daughter's godparents. Um, I just sold their uh, $1.2 million house because they are retiring and moving out. And <clears throat> ultimately, the, the last 11 years of amazing experiences, lots of transactions, deals, income, profits, uh, it all came from just being very persistent and consistent on the conversation, right? And I tell everybody, it, you're, you're just one conversation away. You never know who you're going to talk to. You never know where that conversation or where that relationship can go. So you might as well just continue having them to see what pops up in your world because you just, you don't know where one conversation is going to go. Right, right. So it sounds like though, from that very first time you had that communication, and even what you just said just now, several, more than a handful of years between those two times, but it's all about making contact. 
Yeah. Right. It's all about building the network and, and, and really getting in front of other people to explain what it is that you do and how you do it. But it, but it sounds though, like from the first time to, the, to today, you might have been really good at making the contacts, but you also had to, I guess, massage that real estate muscle, so to speak. So you know what to say, how to say it, uh, the terminology of what to say, especially in the commercial world. Uh, you know, what is NOI, net present value, all these different things that you have to understand when you're putting a deal together. You you really had to build all that up, right? You had to really train and study for that, didn't you? <laughs> I, like, like I mentioned, I was staying up to like 2 and 3 a.m. Just I, my, my girlfriend's sleeping next to me, right? I've got my laptop and I'm like kind of huddled in and I'm legitimately like typing in numbers, forecasting numbers, like, uh, and and it forces you into the conversation, you know, so when you do get that opportunity to have it, right, you're able to speak it. And then the more you speak it, the more experience, the more natural it just comes to you. You're correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the thing, though, too. It, it was one of those things that it was more than just a wish. It was more than just making a bunch of phone calls and and trying to get in front of a potential seller or a potential buyer, for that matter. Mm -hmm. It was actually training that involved that was involved there and, and practicing what you're doing, right? Did, did you have to uh, look at deals and, and sort of practice running those deals and, and uh, understand what, what makes for a good deal or a bad deal, that kind of thing? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. I, uh, <clears throat> I, was, I was so committed to real estate one way or another. It, it was of me, you know, at, at that, uh, that early stage of development. So I was reading everything I could, um, you know, and uh, jumping into Rich Dad, Poor Dad and um, looking at all all sorts of different real estate, whether it was there. Well, at, at the time, what was that? Oh, oh, six, oh, seven. I think we were just getting into like ebook stuff. So there was a lot of ebook stuff. There was um, just information constantly running through my brain, everything I could get my hands on, because uh, again, I was committed to it. I, I knew it was going to be for me. And, um, you know, what what you don't hear about is all, is all the failed conversations where you try and talk it, you try and spit it, and it just doesn't fall, you know, or it doesn't fly, right? It, it doesn't stick with whoever you're talking to. And you've got to go through those. And, and that's just, you know, it's a bump on, along the road. Uh, and we're all going to run into them. So uh, again, it was it was persistence. Uh, it was consistency with, like you said, training my my brain, my verbiage, my you know mindset. Uh, because uh, again, I was I was ultra committed. Like, this was going to work one way or another. Yeah. Well, I mean, not to mention too. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, people see the big wins that you when you take down a giant deal, but they don't see the hundred or two hundred or four hundred or a thousand deals that you've went through just to figure out and find that one that everybody sees. Right. Nobody, right. nobody sees that. Nobody sees you like like you just said, just this described uh run, running analysis in bed, what like running numbers just to see if a deal works or not. It's uh those are the things that nobody sees, right? And yeah. um, I think that what, what you just said too is, is commitment. That's it's that that level of commitment. Now would you say that when it comes to building legacy wealth, then is commitment a big part of making that happen? Yeah, I, well, I think it's it's almost everything, right? Um, so uh, I have a saying that I mention quite a bit, and it's um, you know what I lack in talent, I make up uh, with persistence, and so it's it's the commitment and it's the persistence to. Uh, keep my mind on building something that's more long tail. I'm very, I'm very flip oriented, right? Um, like I wear, I wear flip flops until about November up here in Alaska because I love them. Uh, I flip properties, right? And so I'm, I'm very station to station, if you will. Uh, but the whole purpose of it is to get those, you know, base hits. The just the the natural little chunks that continue growth, right? Um, it's super sexy to go after the big dogs all day long, right? And and I have found way more um, success in the twenty to forty thousand uh, dollar profit projects 
than I have in the multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars, right, in projects. And again, that that's not as sexy to say, but it is an absolute when looking at building this thing long term and building legacy. You know, early on in my career, it was all about those big home run hits. And I just kept falling on my face over and over and over. And uh, being in the commercial world, you know, getting into a commercial deal because I have my license. I mean, that's a that's a six to nine month uh, adventure. <laughs> and um, I've gotten to the closing table and I've had a $90,000 commission stripped away at the closing table. Right. And so being able to uh, have a level of consistency in regards to some of the, the smaller, um, more achievable, profitable base hits has allowed me to really understand what it looks like to build the long tail out and be consistent and persistent in that manner. Mm, interesting. Now, so would you say then that for for maybe someone getting started attacking those base hits first and then maybe mixing in some of those bigger deals because maybe someone that wants to say scale and grow out, uh, you can't really build a whole, I guess you can't really build anything gigantic if you will, if you're just doing the, the small deals all the time, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, somebody out there is going to get lucky. You know, like it, it's going to happen. And um, I would prefer not to rely on luck. So for me, it is what's more approachable. I mean, I, <clears throat> I came up with legacy beyond listings because of my uh, real estate professional side in the transaction game. Uh, I noticed that there were real estate professionals out there that weren't building any sort of retirement or legacy. And so for me, building a system that is approachable, because as a real estate professional, you get into this mode of, oh, I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll put some money aside on the next one. Right. And, and it applies to folks without licenses, you know, just normal every day, go to a job. Um, type individuals, it's, oh, yeah, uh, on the next paycheck, I'll put some money aside. Hmm. So so I had to really take a step back and go, all right, what's bite size, right? How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And so the, the more uh, acceptable approach, what it um, started to uh, turn into and evolve into was, how do I go and I make 10,000? How do I go and I make 20,000? Right. Um, those are the more approachable steps in these scenarios. So uh, in my book, which I have a copy of here, even though this one is not for resale because we're waiting for the finalized copy, Assets, Acquisitions and, uh, and Abundance. Um, first off, what I want people to do is I want them to look at their personal assets in regards to what skills and talents they bring to the table. We all have everything we need right inside our network with our own skills, our own talents, and applying those towards a specific area in the industry, right? And that's how you're going to start the game. If you really want real estate, take a step back, look at what you're good at, and then go see where that applies inside the industry. I guarantee you, you'll find a spot where you can absolutely start to build some wealth. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of us are caught up in our day-to-day -day grinds, whether it's um, going to work, family, uh, all the mundane that's happening, right? Um, and so we don't spend enough time on where our personal strengths are. And, and that um, equates to not being able to apply them, to apply our assets that we already have towards gaining an asset, which to me is everything, right? And that's why assets is the first focus in the book. So I want folks focusing on personal assets, what strengths they have so they can go either take part in acquiring an asset or go do the thing on their own, right? Yeah. And again, it's just, it's, it's approachable base. It's 5, 10, 15, 20, depending on your market and what makes the most sense. Yeah. Well, you know what, Joe? I mean, that's probably one of the biggest mistakes that, that the educational system does is that they, they prepare soldiers and workers, they're not preparing entrepreneurs, right? right. And, and that's the whole system that, that everyone we know has been through, right? And yeah. I think what the, the, one of the biggest follies I find is that most people end up just doing what, um, what, doing what their parents did, 
you know, oh, my right. dad was a carpenter, so I need to be a carpenter. My dad was a, was a, or my mother was a post office worker, so I'm going to be a post office worker, you know, that mm. kind of thing, as opposed to gearing for what you're good at, which is exactly what you just said, you know, and, uh, and, and then, but then what's even worse, as they get into adulthood, they fall into that, into that, that phase where they're just now uh, doing what they do, get caught up in life, and then their, their real potential is lost or trapped. You know, because they, right. they don't even know where to start. And uh, but your approach of identifying how what you're good at and how can it be applied and maybe partnering up with other people, because this is not a lone wolf business. You're, no. you're doing this with, with other people. You know, right. So, uh, for instance, there's 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 guys that I know. They're excellent at networking. They love talking to people. They love getting in front of them. They can they can sell but they just, they're not good at sourcing deals. They're not good at, at finding, at finding deals. It's just not their thing. You know, right. they don't, they don't want to deal with it. They don't want to operate either, you know, but if you're an operator and that's what you do, you love doing it, or you're really, really good at it, then you need to be partnering up with one of those guys that raise money and vice versa. Right. Bada and, bing. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You know? And um, so the, can, can you talk a little bit more about that? How do, how do you, how do you define your, your skills? Like, how do you, do you do some sort of test or something like that? Does your book cover anything like that? <clears throat> so there's one example that I made, uh, inside of it. Uh, so I, at one point in my career, I was running a billion dollar brokerage, real estate brokerage, which sounds super cool. I, I always say it because it's so sexy, right? Billion dollar brokerage. Billion dollars. Um, instead. Billion dollars <laughs> is very sexy. Yeah. Billion dollars. Yeah. Um, the truth of the matter is that was all of our agents production, right? And we had 400 agents. So anyway. Oh, geez. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> a billion, uh, it adds up pretty quick. Um, yeah. But we also had just amazing, talented individuals. So, but I was, uh, I was teaching a class and I had this uh, newer licensee in there and he was a F-15 pilot, uh, formerly. And He's getting real frustrated. We're going through a UVP uh, exercise, unique value proposition, right? How to define your strengths. And he's getting real frustrated. And I could, I could see it. So I, I was like, hey, Chris, what's going on? You know, like, talk to me about what, what, you're, what you're feeling, what you're going through. And he's like, he's like, I just don't know how to apply flying this amazing aircraft to real estate, right? And I said, mm -hmm. okay, let's, let's go ahead and take a step back. Right. What's important about flying that aircraft? And we we broke it down. We went through, you know, the operational side of the aircraft and we applied it towards the operational side of real estate and helped define what the best approach for him would be. Right. He's he's amazing at getting into the cockpit, taking control and navigating this thing. So if if you're not going to be a lead generation, you know, uh, superstar then you need to be an operational superstar, mm -hmm. right? So, so go find, I, and, and this was just the, the perfect prelude to, to say, all right, maybe you're not the best on your own because if you're not going to go find the business, go get with somebody that's going to find the business. You just take the business and you run with it because you're amazing once you have the business on uh, carrying it through to execution and transaction. So uh, being able to just take a step back and go, all right, what do I do in my day-to-day -day operations, uh, whether that's in a job, um, whatever it may be? Where, where do you thrive and where do you have the most fun, right? And can you apply those pieces over into a side of the industry, right? Because you've got, you've got your high D personalities, those, those folks that are just going to go get shit done, whether you like it or not, they leave bodies in the wake, right? So those guys are guys and gals need to be focused on lead generation, right? Then you've got your high eyes, your networkers, right? And they need to be out there just making contacts, talking to people, you know, building relationships, building conversations, because deals are going to fall out of that, right? And then you get into your S and your C personalities. Your S is more of your, your steady Eddie. Um, they have to be comfortable. So those are your relationship builders. They need to focus on where that piece of it is going to um, really play out in the industry and and not they're not networkers, right? They're relationship builders. They get in good and they get in deep. So they need to really focus on their network and where opportunities might lie. And then your C, your high, you know, high C um, engineer types, 
like they are details, they are right step by step, uh, you know, more on the transactional side, and they tend to take care of business numbers, profits uh, a lot better than the majority of the other, you know, uh, three types of personalities. So taking a step back, figuring out where your strengths are, and then um, applying them into the industry specifically, and looking at where where it's going to provide a little bit of passion and whether you can see um, a, a path forward in making money and doing so. Excellent. So you know, and you're, and you're identifying those types of personalities then, right? Do you have a, like a chart or some sort of thing that you use? Like I, I have I have one called Pace P A S E where uh, that's practical, action, social, and emotional. Depending on that that personality type, that you can line them up with the the type of uh, of person that you're going to be talking to and calibrate what you're going to say and how you're going to say it to them. Right. It's not, it's not my system. Uh, yep. borrowing it from someone else. But it sounds like you have a similar sort of system then, right? Yeah, um, we used Ableson um, for for quite a while. I mean, there's there's so many different personality assessments out there, right? Go find one and figure out, you know, really what speaks to you. And, um, you know, after going through it, if it, uh, the the best possible scenario is to take a personality assessment and then go talk to somebody about that assessment right? Whether that is through the company that administered the test, because they can qualify if it aligns with you or not, right? Just purely taking a personality test, you're going to have some, uh, a lot of times we see those personality tests and people are like, oh, no, 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 that's not me. That's not me. Well, yeah, purely based on your response, that totally is you, right? So it's, it's best to uh, have somebody qualify if you're going to go through it you know, in that regard. Right, right, right. And there's, there's also, if you're, if the personality test is easy to apply as well, some of those ones are, are somewhat difficult. Like right. the dark triad, for instance, is very, very hard to, to administer because it requires, well, to administer to someone else. Uh, the great thing about the PACE system, for instance, is that just by having a normal conversation with somebody, depending on what they're saying and how they're saying it, you're able to figure out the personality type and then you're able right. to calibrate what you're going to say to them, which, which is great when you're talking to, like, say a practical person, you identify them as practical just because of the way they're saying something. And then your response is going to be something along the lines of, well, I'll tell you what, let's connect up next week and we'll talk about X, Y, Z, as opposed to an action-based person who's going to want to know, okay, great. Well, let's, let's talk tomorrow then let's hurry up and get it to get, we'll get a contract signed in the next three days, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and those two people are two very different types of people and you should, you get to calibrate what you're going to say as a, as a person to that, that individual. It sounds like in your, in, in your organization, the, these guys are all like specialists, so to speak, uh, where you're, you're, se you're segregating out the type of personality to the, the person that they're going to be talking to, which is, right. uh, which is great. That's phenomenal. That's great stuff. That's great yeah, stuff. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's just so many aspects to, you know, this industry and building a team. I mean, it's it's crucial. You know, you can't be you can't go very far as a, just a one man stand. Right. Like you right. have to have people in your corner and be able to, um, you know, help align that team to work in your in your favor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and that's the thing, though, too. I think uh, we hate to beat a dead horse, but this is not a. A, a a a one one person you know one person thing here when you're playing the real estate game you're playing it with with a lot of other people uh, you have to build your team and when you're going off and talking to people you're telling them about you and your team and what you can do how fast you can close who they are the assets they own yada 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 all that stuff right it's yep. very very important and uh, by aligning yourself and bringing value to those on your team and those around you, that's how you get those deals. That's how you close. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, and that's, that's probably one of the biggest things that I realized early on in, in, in my career that, um, that I wish I would have known even sooner. Right. But, uh, I figured that out on my own, which is, uh, which is great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, that is good. Well, and you're, you're, you're reiterating your brand with every conversation, right. And who you are, yeah. uh, whether you like it or not, that's what's happening, you know, and so the the more that you can understand who you are, um, what you're good at, you know, where you you fall short, 
That's a big piece of it as well, right? Uh, the better off you're going to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, shifting gears here, for someone that is building up their team and really trying to get an understanding of the market, right? Mm -hmm. What are your general thoughts around someone that wants to get into a market? Uh, there's oftentimes I'll, I'll get uh, I'll get calls. Hey, I'm in. I live in Seattle and I want to buy deals all over the place. <laughs> Good luck. I want to buy deals here. I want to buy deals there. I want to buy in North Carolina. I want to buy in, in Oklahoma City. I want to buy. It's like okay. Yeah. What, what are your general thoughts around that? And <laughs> and and how do you build up a, a market for uh, for for what you do as as a business? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. So. Uh, go find somebody already doing it. Um, you know, it's uh, if you look at all the sports analogies, right? Um, finding a coach, finding a mentor, um, but finding somebody that's already doing it is going to allow you to leverage um, their talents, their know how, their expertise, and apply them to your world, right? And so when I look at it, like if I was going to, uh, maybe Seattle's not the best. Uh, example right now, but if I was going to go down to Oklahoma City, uh, I would go and I would I would search out somebody that's already doing what I want to be doing at a at a high level, and see if I can trade out right any sort of talent for the opportunity to learn to learn the market. Uh, you can I mean purely by calling a real estate professional in any of those markets, you're going to be able to at least get an idea of the market, right? But uh, but finding somebody that's that's already doing it. Um, whether they become a coach, a mentor, or an asset in your team, right, will be hypercritical for you finding success as fast as possible by leveraging what they already know and what they already offer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, but even taking the Seattle experience or the, the Seattle uh, example, rather, yep. if someone in, is in Seattle and they're, they can't find deals because it's very tough to find a good right. cash flowing deal in Seattle. However, if you're great at raising money and there's tons of money out in Seattle right now uh, because of, of, of big tech, man, I mean, that's, that, that to me screams that your superpower is raising money. Right. Your superpower is connecting the dots in the network. If you can align yourself with an operator in Oklahoma City or wherever for that matter, then you can bring the money to the table. That operator can run the deal and you guys partner up and, and away you go. I mean, it's, 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 I'm not going to say it. Look how easy it is. It's not, it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it is like it is right i mean we we are the ones that are restricting our growth and our evolution yeah. by the inability of our mind to look at how accessible all that is right now like with with the stock market going crazy this this is probably one of the biggest um pieces from my book that i'd love for people to walk away with is there is so much opportunity right in your own network. And if you can't find it in the closest 10 friends or the closest 50 friends, then ask them about their 10 friends or their 50 friends. Because what's happening right now is you're seeing this fortification of money right now where they're maybe taking out of this market and looking to push it elsewhere. So for, for those of us that have been in it, it's a very easy conversation. But for those that are looking to get in it, you have to have some sort of stability in your world. And what I mean by that is you have to have someone, some sort of leverage point, some sort of uh, operator that you can leverage out to say, hey, give me these funds. Here's what we're going to do with these funds. And here's what we expect you to make off of that transaction. It's there. It's so there. You just have to put yourself out there for um, people to be aware of what you do and be willing to have the conversation and get told no, right? But that no gets you closer to a yes every single time. Excellent, excellent, love it, love it, love it. Now, what is that one piece of bulletproof advice that you would give to a listener that's listening to you right now? What would you tell them? Uh, for me, it, it always comes down to mindset and whether you're uh, finding yourself in scarcity or abundance, right? And that's why I talk about it in my book, Assets, Acquisition, and Abundance. Uh, if, if you can open your brain to an abundant, a possibility way of thinking, the, the world will unravel opportunities for you. It'll show up. And um, my wife likes to call that some butterfly bullshit uh, every now and again. 
Uh, but it has worked time and time again, continuing to, to harp on having a positive, positive abundant mindset, um, and then really just um, focusing on the asset, right? The asset will lead you to the next asset, uh, whether that's your personal strengths or whether it's a structure, a business, an opportunity. Um, you can you know, apply assets to any side of the world that's going to, um, you know, bring about some sort of evolution in, in that regard. So, um, yeah, have a, have an abundant mindset and, you know, just go turn over a bunch of rocks. I guarantee there's opportunity waiting for you out there. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, and, and that does. works. It works. <laughs> it, it, it does. It does. It does. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, if you want to reach out to Joe, you can reach him through his website at legacybeyondlistings.com. I hope you got a really good idea on how you can build wealth through real estate investing the smart way. All right. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed the Bulletproof Cashflow Podcast. 